Welcome back to the channel, my friends. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're taking a look at this week's pre orders, and they are live. This video is sponsored by CMO Games. More on that later. All right, so here we have this week's pre orders focusing in on the Astra Militarum. Uh, so we see right off the bat they have a big old bundle here, slash collection, for $659. And that includes the limited edition art print. And then they also have a collection as well for $295 that includes an art print. It appears the main difference is that this box right here includes all of the stuff that was in the army set. So we see right off the bat, Lord Solar Leontis is in both. Ursula Creed is in both. Then we see the heavy weapons teams in both. We see the Rogel Dorn in both. And then the art print in both. And then if we take the army book codex, the cards, two squads of regular guardsmen, one command squad of the guardsmen as well. And then we have the sentinel and the field ordinance. And then the only difference on top of that that I'm noticing here is the dice as well. So we can scroll right down and see the dice are $35. But for some reason... If we take that $35 and put it on the $295, that's going to take us up to $330. So there's still a $329 difference between this box set. And I think what Games Workshop did was they individually totaled up all of these items and then charge you the full retail price for them. So I'm pretty sure, and I haven't done a ton of research on this, but if you went ahead and just purchased Collection Mark III, you purchase the Astra Militarum dice, and then you can still buy the Astra Militarum Starter Army Battle Force set from Games Workshop. And that would include everything else. And that box set is 200 So that's basically going to take you up to 330 plus 200 for the box set. So that's 530 So I'm pretty sure you can literally save like $130 by just buying this and then the Astra Militarum box set instead of just buying this and you will get the exact same contents so is this intentional is games workshop trying to rip off their customers or do they just offer it up because they know there's a lot of people out there that are just going to click buy on the biggest deal that they offer i suspect that's probably the case i don't think they're openly trying to rip anyone off they're not being deceitful or anything like that but the fact that you can literally just buy the box set and the dice add it to this and save like 140 dollars Okay, so just to double check, I went ahead and searched the Astra Militarum box set. And here we have it, Cadia stands. And we have the Special Edition Codex, which is the cover is different from the one that's offered in that set. We have the cards. We have two infantry squads, one command squad, two of the field ordnance batteries. And then we also have a Sentinel as well. And again, if we just go back here and look at the box set, it's two infantry squads, one veteran squad, the cards, the Codex the two field ordnance batteries, the Sentinel, and then the only thing you would be missing if you spent that extra $200 is the dice. So for $4.95, you basically have $164 that you can spend on dice, and you'll have the exact same stuff that comes in this box set. The only difference that I can find, and I'm open if somebody can point out something else, but the only difference that I can find is the cover on the actual codex will be different. You'll have the special edition cover that came exclusively in the Cadian Stands box set as opposed to the regular cover, uh, which is offered in this box set. So just be aware of that. I'm not sure how many people actually purchase these bundles, but uh, be very careful as this is definitely the most suspect one we have ever seen. All right. So that being said, we can move on from there. We have the Codex Astro Militarum collector's edition so 90 bucks for the special edition codex we have the regular codex at 55 the cards at 29 and if you're not into the Cadia stands special army box set uh, essentially that is the combat patrol so the combat patrol is on the horizon should be out in the second wave of guard releases uh, with our rough riders the caster cans and a couple other things that are still missing and that set is essentially just going to be the Cadia stands army box but it doesn't include the codex or data cards and it will be priced at 150 instead of 200. Uh, so the dice actually look really good. I do like the quality of these. The marble dice look really good. Um, honestly, this is a nice dice set, uh, but $35 for 15 dice is definitely pulling a fast one in my opinion. 
And there are some really nice alternative companies out there that I would definitely recommend people have a look at. All right, so all of these are the individual components. We have the Acadian Command Squad, 45 bucks there. Tons of cool bits in this set. We have the Acadian Shock Troopers, 50 bucks for 10 of them. The Heavy Weapon Squad coming out this week. Uh, very nice right here. Definitely some cool stuff. I think honestly, right now, there's a lot of different ways that you can play guard as like a gun line. You can do some indirect fire shooting, etc. To tell you the truth, I think that guard indirect shooting is still very strong and people are sort of like pretending like it's not or maybe they just haven't realized it yet. The loss of armor of contempt sort of like balances out the loss of the special rule that was affecting guard. Previously, they made a ruling for indirect fire. So it's essentially an additional minus one to hit and your opponent gets an additional plus one to their save or one less. It's sort of weird how it's worded out. So I don't want to get into like all the specifics of it, but essentially it's minus one to hit and it removes one from the AP value. So the removal of armor of contempt means that when you're shooting at like MEQs now, they don't have that same minus one. So it balances out the extra minus one from indirect fire. So really the only drawback now is essentially the additional minus one to hit. So it's not great, but there's a lot of ways that you can get re-rolls or pluses to hit, etc. that are going to sort of balance that out. So I think between running heavy weapon squads with mortars and also potentially running some of the field ordnance batteries, we could see some decent builds. I don't think people are going to go all in on the indirect fire aspect, but I don't think it's crazy that you could see indirect fire creeping back into the meta in a powerful way. And the reason I say that is a lot of people are using like small little squads of just dinky little troops to hide completely out of line of sight and hold down objectives and do important stuff. And honestly, something like Howling Banshees or Rangers or insert, you know, MEQ equivalent here is not going to stand up to concentrated indirect fire. So I think that's something that's definitely being overlooked now. So we do see the Field Ordnance Battery, the Rogaldorn Battle Tank. This thing is super cool. Can't wait to get my hands on one of these and paint it up. We see the Lehman Russ is back for 60 bucks with all of the weapon options. I, I do really like this. I hope people didn't take it the wrong way. I think it's great that they're bringing back the Lehman Russ with all of the weapon options. Previously, it was two separate kits and you got like a bunch of different weapons in one, a bunch of different weapons in the other, but you weren't able to build all of the variants. Now it's a single kit with all the variants. I do like that so that there's never any feel bads if you buy the wrong kit or you buy the kit you want and then it turns out not to be the good one. So definitely a big fan of that. 60 bucks for the Lehman Russ. I do really like the new model for the Armored Sentinels. They are super cool. Definitely very nice and also builds the Scout Sentinel. Uh, really cool. We have Lord Solar Leontis next. So Lord Solar Leontis is super cool. I'm definitely a big fan. I understand this model is super divisive. A lot of people don't like the idea of him riding into battle on a horse. Uh, I think they pretty much took care of that because it's a mechanical horse. So even if it gets blown mostly to smithereens every single battle, uh, as long as there's still a little something left, they can always rebuild it. Uh, so definitely a fan of this model. Super cool. I'm looking forward to painting them up and I think I'm going to do mine a little bit more grim dark than this one. I do like the overall bright look and everything and the idea of solar and sun and all that good stuff. But uh, I think mine's going to be a little more grim dark than that. And we have Lord Castellan Ursula Creed. So 45 bucks for this model. I got to say, I think this is the biggest loser of the release. I think it's overpriced at 45 bucks. She is a special character, but she's priced higher than the Space Marine characters. Doesn't actually look that good. And honestly, the rules for her are mediocre at best. So when it's all said and done, I think she's the biggest loser from the new line. And now a quick message from this week's sponsor. This video is sponsored by CMOGames.com, where you can get 15% off most Games Workshop pre-orders, and they go live right at midnight Saturday mornings. CMOGames.com offers free shipping on orders over $25 in the U.S. 48, and most orders ship within 24 hours. CMOGames.com has been selling Games Workshop products online for more than 20 years, and customer service is their top priority. CMOGames.com carries the full line of Games Workshop products, including 40K, Age of Sigmar, Kill Team, Warcry, Paints, Hobbies, and Tools. Visit CMOGames.com using the affiliate link in the description below so they know you heard about CMOGames.com from Warhammer Man Studios. Now, back to the video. And moving on, here we have the Primaris Psyker. Very cool model, finally available for the first time. $33.50 for that one. And we have the Baneblade. So the Baneblade is back in action, and this is in fact the full kit. 
And honestly, this is the most full kit we've ever seen for the Bane Blade. Although it did get a price increase up to $170, it now includes not only all of the options to build all of the different variants of this set, but it also includes all of the parts necessary to build all four of the sponsons. So previously the kit only came with two sponsons, one for each side, and then you would have to acquire an extra set of sponsons previously offered by Games Workshop if you wanted to fully kit this thing out. Now you get the second set of sponsons included. So this has literally everything you need to build the Bane Blade or any of the variants, and now it includes double sponsons. So you can build it fully kitted out with a single purchase, which is how honestly most of Games Workshop's kits, if not all of them, should be. And they're definitely trending in that direction. All right, and then next we have the Armageddon Special Edition. So for the most part, these Special Edition books come in at 65 bucks. This one is priced a little higher at 75 but these are very limited. I believe this one is 2,500 signed copies. Yeah, that's correct. So limited to just 2,500 signed copies. They are numbered as well. This is definitely for the collectors out there. Uh, super cool binding and everything like that. Honestly, nice if you're into this kind of stuff. Uh, really cool. And these do typically sell out pretty quickly. Sometimes it's not immediate, but if you do want a copy of this, I would not hesitate or you're going to end up paying a substantial premium in the aftermarket. Then we got a couple of the other books and some leftover stuff from last week's pre-orders. It is sort of interesting that they're going a different way on the dice now. So there's two sets of different dice that they offer basically. You can buy like the marbled sets, which include 15 dice, or you can buy like the just regular kind of like plain sets, which include 20 dice. And then they're priced differently as well. So it's $35 for the marbled dice and you get 15, or it's $40 for the regular dice and you get 20. So essentially, just to do the basic math for you, if you wanted to get 20 of the marbled dice, it would essentially cost you your initial $35 for the first 15 and then about $12 for another five, assuming you could even purchase them in that way. So at this point in time, it is officially $47 for Games Workshop's marbled dice if you want 20 of them. $47 for 20 dice. What a deal. What a bad deal is what I meant. A horrible, horrible, terrible deal. All right. And then we have the Scout Sentinel variant. And we've got some of the releases from last week. The Cast Lord on Karkadrak, the Pitch Battle General Handbook, and some of the other Chaos models as well. So lots of cool stuff here from last week's releases. And then obviously this week's releases as well. We do see Horus Ascended at $144. And moving right along, we've just got all of the different variants available for the Bane Blade. And this is all just that same Bane Blade kit. It just is all the different named versions of it. So that's it for this week. Uh, quite a bit going on there. Lots of stuff coming for the Astro Militarum. Still some items haven't been released yet from the new line uh, for the Astro Militarum players out there. So if you are one of those few people thinking about picking up the limited edition collections right here, take a little time and just double check that what I said was correct. And I think you'll end up saving yourself about $150 just buying this collection right here or just buying all of the models individually, including the box set to kind of fill the gaps. Special thanks to CMO Games for sponsoring this video. Check them out to save 15%. That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man. Let me know what you're picking up and I'm out of here.